So this month's recipe is arancini, which means little orange in Italian. I think this is a dream dish for a classic Chardonnay. You've got the beautiful texture and a little bit of freshness, tartness and creaminess and it's so beautiful this kind of sweet tart matches the sweet tartness of the chardonnay very very good And then we need a little bit of lemon zest. Dolores Cake Bread has Meyer lemons growing all around the property. So these are Meyer lemon, but you can use the Eureka lemons that you'd find in the grocery store. Meyer lemon is a little bit more aromatic and very common in, here in California. A little butter in the bottom of the skillet. You want a wide bottom skillet with straight sides. Add in your onion, fennel, and garlic. And we're gonna cook this down until it's soft. You don't really wanna caramelize it. You don't want to brown it at all. It's just really to soften the vegetables a little bit before we add our rice. While you're doing this, you want your broth on the back of the stove. Your broth is sort of key. Now you can use canned broth, but if you do have, make your own homemade vegetable broth or chicken broth, I think you wind up with a much nicer product. Your veggies begin to soften a little bit. Add in your rice. You want to toss the rice around so it gets evenly coated with the butter. And you just want to add a couple ladles of broth at a time and just stir that around while the liquid is being absorbed. The starch on the rice is gonna sort of dissolve into the broth as it cooks. And that's what makes it nice and creamy. The risotto takes about 18, 20 minutes. So this is where at home, you probably pour yourself a glass of wine and just enjoy the whole process. After you've been doing this for about 15 minutes or so, it's a good idea just to check it, find out how starchy the grains of rice are. Your end result is for the, the risotto to be firm, but cooked all the way through. What I wanna do is add a splash of Chardonnay. I like to add it towards the end. That way I think the freshness, the acidity of the wine sort of shines through. And a lot of times you'll see risotto recipes will add the wine in the beginning. But personally, I just, I like to add it towards the end. I think it's a little bit brighter and you get the acid of the wine to perk in the risotto up a little bit. And you cook that for a minute or two to let the alcohol evaporate off. Add in a little bit of Parmesan, stir that in. And cook this for just a minute. At the very end, stir in your lemon zest and your chopped fennel fronds. And we want this to cool down, so you could either leave it off to the side and let this cool, or you could spread it out on a sheet pan or put it in a bowl and put it in the refrigerator and let it cool down so that you can uh, start rolling this into balls. When it first comes off the stove, it's really creamy, and mm -hmm. you put it in the refrigerator or let it cool to room temperature, and it, it thickens up quite nicely. And then the other ingredient that we have, and this is just what goes in the middle of it, I think is sort of a surprise that everybody really enjoys. Bellwether Farms, one of our favorite cheese makers in the area, and it's, uh, it's modeled after a cheese from Northern Italy. It's funny, I can tell already by the ingredients that it's going to go with the Chardonnay very well. Well, that was, uh, that, that's the whole idea. So yes. That's what we're You're shooting for master here. master at that. So you just grab a ball of this and you sort of smash it in the palm of your hand. And then the idea with the crescenza is just to put a little bit in the center. When we're doing lots of these, we'll actually freeze this. So you just sort of put this solid piece in the center. I see. You can play around with different cheeses. You just want something that uh, when it does heat up is going to melt fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And then just roll it in the palm of your hand like that so that the cheese is enclosed. What's nice about it is that you make them, put them on a sheet pan like we're doing right now, and then freeze them. Anything you can do ahead when you're entertaining I think exactly. is, makes your life a lot easier. And just dip them in a little egg, makes the breadcrumbs adhere, and then gently roll them in the panko. They're great breadcrumbs. I think they give you a really nice crispy coating on the outside. And then I just need to heat up a small pan with a, some vegetable oil. Drop these in till the outsides get nice and crispy. And have something for you to enjoy with your, your Napa Chardonnay. Get them while they're hot. So, right. so lemon, fennel, and crescenza cheese. You make a Chardonnay that's a pleasure to cook too, because oh. there's a lot of them out there that they might be nice to sip on their own, but as far as you know, enjoying them with food, you know, you don't get inspired, but the Chardonnay that you make every year it sort of makes it easy oh. on us. So we have beautiful fruit that primarily comes from the cooler Carneros region. It ripens slowly, but very concentrated, and the acidity ret retains uh, very, very well. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it comes a little bit north of the city of Napa, so it's a little bit riper, deeper flavors. 
And blending it all together is so great because it creates a very complex wine from different microclimates. You get this kind of rich, deep flavors, but also a fresh core of citrus and apple. And it's really a joy to put together. Sometimes I'll have maybe 80 different lots of Chardonnay. I think that's amazing. Yeah, it's so amazing to see it on the vine and then to see the juice in the press and then in the barrel and now here in the wine. It's just really great. Cheers. And it goes wonderful with these. Thanks. Thank you.